Hi, in this video I'm going to prove the local uh, dumas Laplace central limit theorem which is connecting a binomial distribution to a normal distribution in a limit. Now the binomial is discrete and the normal is continuous and therefore it's not so easy to connect these two. So I'm going to start with motivating this theorem and then I'm going to state it and in further three videos I'm going to do the proof of it. Take a binomial random variable of parameters m p p will be fixed and uh, n will go to infinity so notice that p is fixed it's not going to zero so we are not in the Poisson approximation regime we are in the uh, central limit theorem regime okay and okay i'm going to call this random variable x so x has this binomial mp distribution Okay, and if you look at, uh, well, first of all, let me just mention that Q is, as so far always, uh, is 1 minus P, and I'm going to use Q, Q and P together, and then take the following combination. Here is the binomial random variable of mean, of mean NP and variance NPQ. Take this binomial random variable, subtract its mean, so now it means zero, divide by its standard deviation or square root of the variance, which is, okay, let me just write it out first, variance uh, x. So when I plug all this in, then it's x minus np over uh, square root of the variance, sorry, square root of the variance or standard deviation. So square root of the variance is square root of npq. So now this combination has mean zero because I subtracted the mean and if you take its variance then the square of this constant comes out in front and that gives uh, the variance of x minus np or the variance of x over the variance of x again. So the variance is one. So this one is mean zero and variance one. Okay this combination of a binomial. This is a discrete random variable. It can take on 0 minus np over square root npq or 1 minus np over square root npq and so on and so on up to n minus np over square root npq. So it's a discrete random variable. It's not integer anymore because I divide it by this number here. Now <coughs> the dumas laplace central limit theorem tells us that this thing should be close to normal. Okay, so this thing should be close to standard normal. And standard normal has, uh, <coughs> I'm just going to use for a while the uh, density, the probability density function. So phi of x is 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2 for all x in R. So that's the density of standard normal, as we all know, all well know. Okay, so the statement is, in some philosophical level, that this discrete random variable should be close to this continuous random variable. And what I'm going to explain in this video is what we actually mean by this statement, one possible way of interpreting that statement. And actually, I'm going to be able to formulate this theorem precisely once we figure out what we mean by this discrete random variable being close to this continuous random variable. Okay, because it's absolutely not, not clear at this moment what we mean by that. Okay, <coughs> so the mass function of x without doing all this machinery, just x itself. The mass function is of course the, well, the notation is, uh, I'm going to use is px of k, and that's of course the probability that x equals to k. And I want to somehow relate this to the fact that uh, x minus np over square root of npq does something which can be understood in terms of a continuous version, a continuous normal random variable okay now here is my claim or my idea of how to do this so this is the real line and in the real line is embedded the integer line 
So these are integers and somewhere here is the number k. And I want to find out about the probability that my discrete random variable is equal to k. Okay, I want to find out the probability, the mass function, that my discrete x is equal to this integer k. Now, what does it mean to be an integer? Well, it means that it exactly is at this point and not at that point and not at this point and not anywhere else. It's exactly here. And obviously, if I look at this continuous normal random variable, it doesn't make any sense in terms of a continuous random variable because any combination of a continuous random variable will never take on a fixed point. Any, any reasonable function of it will never take on any, any reasonable transform of k. So this would all be zero probability in terms of a continuous random variable. It makes perfect sense for the discrete x, but it, it's not clear how to make sense of it for the continuous normal random variable. And therefore I'm going to replace this event by a slightly different event. I'm going to say that the, I want to talk about intervals. Whenever I have a continuous random variable, I always want to talk about intervals. And I'm going to say that this number k is best represented by the interval from k minus half to k plus half. This is k minus half, and this is k plus half. And I'm going to say that instead of x equals to k, I'm, I'm going to, to say that my discrete random variable, if I want to think of it as some kind of a continuous thing later on, then the best way to think about it in terms of intervals is that it goes between k minus half and k plus half. Because this is my best guess of differentiating the integer k from k plus one or k minus one in terms of an interval of positive length. Okay, so that's kind of the idea that the integer k is best represented by a unit length interval uh, that goes plus minus one half around k. If I went further on, then I would say that I'm rather at k plus one than at k, or if I go further to the left, I would say now I'm rather at k minus one than k. So this is my best representation of the interval uh, as an interval of the integer k. Okay, so this is the reason why I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say that this is the probability that x is greater than or equal to k minus half. Well, let's use, let's use greater here. And smaller than or equal to k plus half. Whether it's strict or non-strict doesn't matter. Okay? Now, I actually didn't do anything with this step. I just said that if x is k if and only if it's between k minus half and k plus half. x is an integer anyway, so I, this is actually the same event. For an integer number to be equal to k is equivalent to be between k minus half and k plus half. So I didn't do anything at this point. Okay? I can now further proceed with this by doing this transformation, which we talked about up here, make it mean zero and variance one, or standardizing it, if you wish. So I'm going to write out the same probability, except I want to talk about x minus np over square root of npq, which is the combination seen up here. So I want to standardize my random variable. So what did I do? I subtracted np, I divided it by npq, so I need to do the same with the k minus half, and the k plus half. So I'm going to subtract uh, np and I'm going to divide by square root of npq on both sides. So let's do that. Okay. And so now let me go back to the statement which should the central limit theorem be about. It should be about this combination or if you wish this combination to be close to a standard normal variable. And if you think about this as a continuous random variable, then these kind of probabilities actually make sense. So now this is an interval, and now this makes sense as a continuous random variable. If this was a continuous random variable, this would be a perfectly meaningful probability here. Okay, so this makes more sense now to think about normal variables, normal random variables. Okay, in this form it makes more sense. Actually, if you look at carefully what's going on here, 
This is an interval of length 1 over root of mpq, because it goes from k minus half minus mp to k plus half minus mp. This is length 1 over root of mpq. n goes to infinity, everything else is fixed. So this interval is actually quite short. And therefore, if, if we expect, so what we expect here, what we expect here is that if this behaves anything like a normal random variable, a standard normal, that this should really be close to the density. This should really be close to the density, and I'm going to tell you in a second where, times the length of this interval. This should really be close to something like phi of x dx. The probability that a normal random variable is in an interval of length dx should be something like this. Okay? So what is x? Where am I taking my combination x minus mp root mpq? Well, this is, of course, at k minus mp over square root mpq, because this is the point around where I'm looking at a short interval. So I'm going to add here k minus mp over root of mpq. This is where I'm looking at my random variable x minus mp over root mpq. And I'm going to add here the length of the interval which goes from k minus half minus mp over root mpq to k plus half minus mp over root mpq. So that's a total length of 1 over root mpq. Okay, so this is what we expect. This is what should happen. Now it makes sense in terms of the, the normal approximation, the normal density. What we expect is that the mass function should be close to phi at this point times 1 over root mpq. And again, the reason is that before the transformation, an integer k is represented best by an interval from k minus one half to k plus one half. After the transformation, it transforms to this. And if this is like a normal random variable, then this is what we would expect. Okay, so that was kind of a motivation. And now I can actually state the de Moivre-Laplace central limit theorem. The de Moivre-Laplace central limit theorem will say that this is actually the case in some particular way. So theorem, de Moivre Laplace central limit theorem. It exactly states, well, in some way, it exactly states what we concluded down here. Namely, it states that this mass function is close to this combination made with the standard normal density. And here is how the exact statement will go. I'm going to put the mass function at k, and I'm going to divide with the right-hand side here. So I'm going to divide with phi at k minus np, phi at k minus np, over root npq and I'm going to divide by 1 over root npq but dividing by 1 over root npq is the same as multiplying by root npq so the theorem is going to say that this is close to 1 okay if the mass function is roughly equal to this side then the ratio should be close to 1 so this ratio should be close to 1 and that's exactly what the theorem says the difference of this ratio and 1 is not big. Okay, and let me now state the exact conditions. So let x be binomial of parameters and p, p is going to be fixed. So this guy is fixed. And we are going to think about n as something going to infinity. I'm also going to need a n, a deterministic non-random sequence, which is non-decreasing, uh, yes, non-decreasing, okay, and it's, so it could be increasing, but not very fast. So actually, the condition I need is that the limit as n goes to infinity of A n divided by n to the 1 sixth is zero okay so a is non-decreasing it could be a constant or it could be slightly increasing but it cannot increase as fast as n to the one six okay the limit of a n over n to the one six is still zero then then so
So well, this combination is going to be small, even if I take the worst case scenario over a range of k's. So k should be close to the mean mp. How close? Well, root n times a n close. Take the worst case of this for the worst k, such that k minus mp is still less than root n times a n. Notice that a n is at most n to the one, it's smaller than n to the one six, or and at least a constant. So this is something root n or a bit larger than root n, but not much larger. Okay, the worst case scenario of this ratio minus one in that range of k's is still small. It's big O of a n cube over square root of n. And now I need to tell you what uh, big O means. So this big O notation is just a short notation for the following. Uh, H X, I call it big O of X. If the limb soup of H X over X as X goes to zero is finite. Okay, so what is going on here? So Ajax is big O of X is if it's not larger than the order of X. It's, it's in the order of X, that's what it says, or maybe smaller. Now, a n over n to the one six is going to zero. And this is exactly the cube of that. a n over n to the one six cube is exactly what we see underneath the big O. So this thing goes to zero. And so what the theorem says is that take the worst case scenario of the ratio minus one in that range of k's as n goes to infinity, this is still not larger than a n over n to the one six cube. Okay, that's what the that's what the theorem says. So that kind of a way of expressing that this ratio is close to one, that's what we would expect from the argument I just told you before.